I was here at the uh, SIM ANA conference was to represent SIM, which is the organization that really is trying to develop new and innovative ways to measure essentially cross-platform, the use of TV, the internet, mobile and tablets, because honestly, as we all know, that's how the consumer is using and consuming video these days. It's only become more prevalent, and the reality is that if we can't measure it, we can't sell it, we can't understand it, we can't evaluate it, we can't maximize its potential. Um, and one of the reasons I was happy to come to the ANA conference today is that it's obviously national advertisers. And, you know, SIM is designed to represent the three elements of the industry, the content providers, uh, the agencies, and the advertisers. And while I think we have pretty much every major content provider company in the country and probably about 90% of the influential agencies, we could use a lot more um, client participation. And, and I think the thing is that I think a lot of clients feel that when it comes to research and measurement, they're being covered by the agencies. And that may have been true years ago, but the problem is that right now we're in a very, very new world where we don't even have the ability right now to, to measure cross-platform the way we need to. We're making up the rules as we go along. And I think it's really important that uh, clients realize that they can, number one, uh, have some real influence on the way in which the new measurement will be created and rolled out, which will kind of determine the business going forward. Uh, and secondly, it's always great to have a seat at the table. They'll provide us with insights that we normally wouldn't have. Because if SIM is going to be effective, it can't just mirror the... Uh, the issues of the content providers and the agencies. It has to mirror the issues of all three elements of the industry, which is, uh, again, includes the advertisers. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, I think that today's session, which I think was pretty comprehensive, some people said there was so much information it gave them a headache, but um, sometimes when you have no empty calories, there was a lot of information in three hours. But I think it demonstrated how, how important this uh, measurement is and how much work we have to do and the fact that we need the contribution both in terms of people's participation and frankly money uh, you know in order to kind of move the measurement needle but if we don't uh, crack the cross-platform code it's just going to be very very problematic for the industry again when you talk about cross-platform i mean i'm not making a value judgment as to what's better or more effective tv or the internet or tablets or or mobile they're all going to be important and one of the things that i mentioned today at in, in my talk was that i think we have to start from zero and just kind of think about the way in which we're going to do measurement going forward i mean the measurement we have and the and, and the the metrics we use are well over half a century old and they may have served us very very well you know, for a very long time, but, but that time has probably disappeared. Uh, and so, you know, in my view, we probably should be moving from households and demographics to individual measurement and then looking at individual impressions, views, visits, whatever. But the fact of the matter is nobody has the answer. We need to have that dialogue. And what SIM can hopefully do is to provide a forum where the industry can come up with a universal language that everybody will use that will help everyone you know, sort of do what they need to do with respect to all the platforms. So you're not going to have, you know, GRPs become a, a television metric, <laughs> excuse me, and, um, and visits or uniques or something become an internet measurement. I mean, it really has to be a measurement that essentially enables us to follow the consumer across all these platforms and provide the kind of information and data that uh, advertisers, marketers, program producers need. You can't have different measures. In other words, you can't have apples here and oranges there. What you have to have is a set of measures that essentially enable us to do an apples to apples kind of, comparison is not the right word, but to follow the consumer. And so exactly what that will be is something I think the industry has to, to work on. And there's many, many different thoughts about it. But it's not the idea that the internet component will be measured one way, TV another way, mobile another way. It, it's got to be a, a comprehensive and, and all-encompassing measurement that, 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 that basically enables us to follow the consumer and to come up with information and data that is useful and actionable and that gives us the, 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 what we really want to know. I mean, Artie Bolgren at ESPN did a presentation which was terrific today, and what he really said is we really need to know three things. How many, you know, how often, for how long. 
And you know, those are the age-old uh, criteria that advertisers, marketers, you know, media pro content providers have always wanted to know. The new wrinkle is what should the metrics be that we use to report that? The first thing is to measure the use. Once you go there, then obviously there are many, many other kinds of measures that can be either overlaid, like if people want to measure engagement, fine. If they're going to want to measure ROI, and the ROI can be different for individual clients, that's great. But the reality is, I mean, and, and, and again, this is really about video on these different platforms. It's not about other kinds of display advertising or anything like that. So it's not as though there's a, an internet world and then there's a TV world. I mean, we've got to start th stop thinking about it that way. What we have to think about is that there's video content and it can be consumed on a big screen, on a, com you know, on a desktop, on a laptop, on a tablet, you know, on a mobile device, and, and, and it's television. Now, once you get to measure that, if you want to make distinctions that you know there's more engagement with a big screen than there is on a, you know, a smartphone, I mean that that's certainly something that can be done. But that sort of comes after we can follow the consumer, and uh, and sort of know how they're consuming media at its most basic level. At NBC Universal, I mean, we 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 provide content across all these platforms. So you know, they're all my children, and they're all beautiful. To be honest with you, I think what you have to start thinking about is not which is better. It's which works in tandem most effectively for a particular client's particular need. So it's not, you know, digital's better than TV or TV's better than mobile or anything like that. And, and, and obviously, um, once you know how to follow people, you can then decide for a particular, you know, marketing requirement you know, what the media mix would be across those platforms. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do. But again, it all begins with the measurement. And right now, we have very kludgy and cobbled together methods to try to infer what's going on. But it's not as though we can follow an individual and know when they watch something on, you know, when did they watch The Office on TV? You know, did they watch it on mobile? Did they watch it on the internet? And the other problem is, honestly, uh, from a media content standpoint, we don't get credit for the viewing. And so Nielsen came out last week with a uh, report that said that among younger viewers, the use of traditional TV is down, and it never happened before. And I'm not surprised. But I don't think, not only don't I think, but I know from the other research we do, it's not as the you know, younger consumers are watching TV or consuming video less. They're just consuming it. In fact, they're, they're consuming it more. But they're consuming it across many, many different platforms. And, and if it's not television, the big screen, we don't get credit for it. So if somebody's watching, you know, The Office on, on their tablet or if they're watching it um, online, we don't get credit into the television rating. We may get online credit for the number of eyeballs and, you know, visits or page views, whatever you want to, however you want to measure it. But that's not what we need. I mean, because that, that single episode of The Office needs to be looked at in its totality of consumption. I mean, we developed something a few years ago called the TAMI which was the Total Audience Measurement Index. And it was, again, it was an attempt to do what we can't do for, in, for real. And it was basically stacking up the exposures to the same episode, first on TV, you know, then streaming, you know, then on VOD, then on, you know, on, on, on uh, mobile and so on. But there's no way to know duplication. There's no way to know, I mean, there's no way to know any of these things. It really is just cobbling together many different metrics. It's all we had, and so it, it's interesting, and it, it provided a certain insight. But, you know, we're so far along now in terms of people using these different platforms that we have got to figure out a way to get credit for that viewing. Because, after all, I mean, um, if we don't get the kind of credit that is, we're entitled to with respect to how people consumed it, you know, it puts the whole model of the business model of, of, of you know, at risk. Because, obviously, I'm not suggesting that, that you know, we should we should try to get more people into the Nielsen number or whatever the TV number is. I'm simply saying that everybody is deserving of their sort of fair share of who actually watched the show. You're with NBC and NBC is now part of Comcast. Are you notice is the cord cutting audience starting to get big enough that you're starting to pay attention to it and develop strategies around, you know yeah. what, they're not gonna buy a Comcast subscription and they're not gonna watch, you know, channel 404 which is nbc and hd on on comcast yeah look 
I'm not in the Comcast world, so I can't really speak, you know, as uh, as intelligently uh, as somebody from Comcast could. But my understanding is that, you know, the churn of of uh, subscribers really has not been, you know, very significant. And as far as cord cutting, I mean, right now, I think it's something that you clearly want to keep an eye on. Uh, but I don't believe it's the same analogy as, you know, 10 years ago when kids came out of college with their phones and never bought a landline. It's just a very, very different, you know, thing. And so we don't really see cord cutting to be a significant phenomenon yet. I, you know, come see me in three years and that might change. But all I can say is that for now it's an interesting footnote, but it really is more due to economic issues where people just, you know, it's been a tough economy and there are people who have to make cuts and costs and they're the ones that pretty much, when there is cord cutting, they're doing it for economic reasons and what they say in the little research we've done on it is that when things get better, they intend to come back. And similarly, for younger people who have left college, they may not get cable initially because for the first time they realize, oh my God, I gotta pay for this stuff because their parents used to pay for it. But they all say, you know, as soon as I get myself established and I have an apartment and I want to have people come over and stuff, I, I can't watch, you know, TV exclusively on my laptop. I've got to be able to, you know, watch it on a big screen because they don't have TVs either, many of them. They get a TV and, you know, so a lot of it has to do with sort of life stage and economics.